بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the entirely merciful the especially merciful Alif lam mim Alif lam mim غلبت الروم. The Byzantines have been defeated. في أدنى الأرض وهم من بعد غلبهم سيغلبون. In the nearest land, but they, after their defeat, will overcome. في بضع سنين. لله الأمر من قبل ومن بعد ويومئذ يفرح المؤمنون. Within three to nine years, to Allah belongs the command before and after, and that day the believers will rejoice. بنصر الله. يَنصُرُ مَن يَشَاءُ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الرَّحِيمُ In the victory of Allah, He gives victory to whom He wills, and He is the exalted in might, the merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, as you've probably figured out, the topic of this video is a refutation of Sam Shamoon's article that which he wrote several years ago, I assume, uh, about the alleged false prophecy in the Quran in Surah Al Rum regarding the Byzantine victory over the Persians. So, as we saw, the verses state that the Byzantines have been defeated, but they will be victorious within three to nine years after this defeat. Now, Shamun argues that this is a false prophecy because the Byzantines were only victorious over the Persians. The war ended only in 628 CE. So if the verses were revealed in the mid-610s, around 615, that is more than nine years. It's 13 years. So therefore, it's a false prophecy. Um, well, this is why Kermit is uh, doing the face palm. This is a ridiculous interpretation. And he based this on the Tariq al-Tabari, which is the history of the Bari, which is a source that he uses a lot. As we'll see later on, he didn't research the Tariq al-Tabari completely. He ignored a lot of important information. And he also ignored, as he always does, al-Tabari's tafsir, his commentary, which is more reliable than his Tariq which is more reliable than the history of the body. All right, so let's get into it. The reality is, and I'm going to go over three points here. So point one is, the verse says nothing about a total victory, right? And in fact, by 628, when the peace treaty was made and the war, was, war had ended, um, the per Persian Empire still remained intact. It was not until the Muslim uh, invasion that the Persian Empire collapsed. So it was not like the Byzantine Empire completely absorbed 
the Persian Empire. Uh, they, rather, they made peace, and that was the end of the war. So it was not a total victory that the verse was talking about. It was talking about uh, that the Byzantines would be victorious after having been defeated in Syria and Egypt, and, uh, although the verse was revealed before um, the defeat in Egypt. And then point number two, as I mentioned, Shamun only quoted one part of the Tariq al-Dabari. Uh, he was looking at volume eight, and either he ignored or was unaware of al-Dabari's discussion of the verses in volume five. Uh, this is from page 324 of the English translation. So let's look at that now. Uh, Al-Dabari stated, It has been said that God's words, Alif, Lam, Mim, the Romans have been defeated, this is Surah Al-Rum, uh, up to uh, the promise of God, God does not fall short in his promise, but most of the people do not know, were only revealed regarding the affairs of Abarwiz, king of Persia, and Heracle, Heraclius, king of the Byzantines, and what happened between them, which I have recounted in these stories. And notice that there's a footnote by the translator, C.E. Bosworth, which states, oh, look at that, he cites Surah al-Rum, verses 1 through 5, and he states, the translator, states, the text is usually read with the passive verb khulibat al-rum, and then the active one sayyag libuna, and is taken to refer to some battle during the Persian invasion of the Levant, 613 to 614. Okay, so that's when the verses were revealed. And then he also says, see note 746 above, so let's see what that note. So in that note he states, after appearing in Syria, the Persian army had occupied Damascus in 613, and it appeared in Palestine in 614 after defeating the Persian forces in the Haran between al daraa and Basra, possibly the battle referred to in Surat al-Rum. So we can see here the context of the revolution of the verse was in the mid-610s when the Persians had routed the Byzantine armies in Syria and the nearby lands. And by the way, if Shamun had bothered to do his research and looked at al tabaris Tafsir, he would realize that, that the Al-Tabari confirmed this in his Tafsir as well, this understanding. So this uh, is taken from Nadia al-Sheikh's article, Surah al-Rum, A Study of the Exegetical Literature, and there's the link, and here's the translation. And this is Al-Tabari speaking in his commentary on the verse. This being so, the explanation of the wording is, the Persians defeated the room from the land of Al-Sham to that of Persia, and after their vanquishing, the room shall be victors over the Persians subsequent to their earlier defeat. And then he continues, and then he says, God helps whomsoever he will. This is the victory of the believers or the polytheists at Badr. So that's when it was fulfilled. By the, by the Battle of Badr, that's when the room, the Byzantines were victorious over the Persians. Uh, point number three. It is well known that Heraclius scored a series of victories against the Persians, beginning much earlier than 628. It's not like in 628, you know, Heraclius won all the battles and boom, it was over. It had been going on for several years. In 622, Heraclius had begun to turn things around. So this is the timeline that I mentioned in my article. If you read the article uh, along with the video, uh, you'll see this chart. So here are some of the important dates. In spring, spring 613, Pers there were Persian victories at Edessa and Damascus. So notice that I've bolded the word vic victory and defeat. I'm doing what Shamun did, which is what he, he was looking for the word victory in the context of the Byzantine-Persian War. And he found that in 628 CE, in the Tariq al-Dabari, it mentions that the Byzantines were finally victorious over the Persians. If we follow that methodology, Let's just look for the word victory anywhere in regards to the Byzantines, and we'll, fee we'll see that Shamun's argument falls apart. So from 613 to 619, we have Persian victories at Edessa, Damascus, Jerusalem, Alexandria. And then 622, April 622, this is two years before the Battle of Badr, Heraclius leaves Constantinople and begins to turn things around. He, he wins some minor morale-building victories against the Persians by late autumn. Victories! SubhanAllah. So already the the uh, prophecy has been fulfilled. These were minor victories, but they were victories nonetheless. And by the way, this timeline is taken from uh, Walter Kage's book, uh, which I will cite in a minute. And there's also some other data from other books, for example, the Atlas of the Quran, 
by Abu Khalil, and also the sealed nectar by Al Mubarak Puri, the, prof, the uh, biography of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. All right, continuing in six twenty four to six twenty eight, Heraclius began his large scale offensive. Now he's going on the offensive. Up to that point, the Byzantines had been on the defensive. Now they're on the offensive. And then March 624 is when the Battle of Badr happened. This is Badr 1. We'll, we'll get to that later on. And then the same month, Heraclius began his invasion of Armenia. So it coincides. And then later in that year, he won uh, victories at Devin and Takta Suleiman. He destroyed the fire temples in Takta Suleiman. And by the end of the year, he had defeated the Persian general Shabaraz near Arkesh. So we can see here, the prophecy was definitely fulfilled because within nine years of the revelation, um, starting as early as 622, Heraclius had won major victories. Right? And then by 628 is when the Persians asked for peace, and that was the end of the war. Um, notice here in January 626, there was a second Badr expedition. We'll get to that later on. There was a second expedition to Badr. A lot of people don't know this. This is called Badr II. All right, so these are the victories that Heraclius won, starting in 622 up until the end of 624. These were the victories that eventually led to the ultimate victory in 628, when the Persians finally gave in and asked for peace. Uh, now let's look at some quotes from Walter Kage's book. Again, the timeline that I just showed you is from this book, with some additions from other sources. So let's see some interesting quotes from Walter Kage. Remember that Shamoon was looking for the word victory in Tariq al-Tabari? Let's do the same thing and look for the word victory in Walter Kage's work in regards to the Byzantines. So we saw some interesting quotes there. Let's just go back. Notice the last one. Heraclius returned as victor to the greetings of a joyous citizenry at Constantinople and was able to enjoy the fame of having triumphed over the Persians. All right, so this is in 622. Minor victories, but victories nonetheless. And it built morale. Per the Byzantines were very depressed up to that point. When they finally won some battles, even minor ones, they were ecstatic. And uh, Walter Kage specifically says that Heraclius enjoyed the fame of having triumphed over the Ver Persians. So the pr prophecy was fulfilled. Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. And this was even before 624 when he began his offensive. So we can see that already it has fallen apart for Shamun. He, is, he did not do his research. He just jumped into it with his a priori bias, misquoted the sources, didn't do any good research on this, and then just went from there. Uh, in part two, we'll talk about a variant reading of Surah Al-Rum, which Shamun jumped on, again, but he did some really poor research and didn't really look into it with uh, great detail, inshallah. So we'll see that in part two.